South Korean city volunteers continue to survey the flood damage in Busan. In Kaohsiung, Taiwan, city volunteers spent a month cleaning Mr. Liu's property. Selamat datang ke Dai Headlines, saya Simon Gan. Terima kasih menyertai sesi berita kita. Welcome to Dai Headlines, I'm Simon Gan. Thank you for joining us. South Korean city volunteers continued the flooding damage survey in Busan. At the same time, they also cared about the two local volunteers undergoing training in Busan and provided immediate companionship. This is the 23rd day. 釜山發生大雨的時候,這裡是有三個人很不幸在這個地下水道裡頭罹難往生。Chief volunteers in South Korea travel 500 kilometers south from Seoul to Busan, which was devastated by torrential rain, to conduct disaster surveys continuously. They are also concerned about whether the local volunteers who are being trained are safe. That night, the wind and rain were very heavy. When I drove home and passed by this low-lying intersection, the whole car swayed from side to side and became like a boat. It felt like a boat on the water. The rain was so heavy that it's like irregular. Just like there was a big hole in the sky, the basement of my apartment was completely flooded, and the road was hardly seen because of flooding. People still have lingering fears when recalling the time of flooding. Bursan, from the port to the city center, as well as the well-known place for vacation Hyundai, was covered with trays of floods. Fire trucks are on standby, and water pumps operate day and night. July is the wettest month in South Korea every year. Under the impact of warming weather, the cold air from the north and the warm and humid air from the south meet violently making the accumulated rainfall in Bernsan more than 7% higher than the average of previous years. This wave of rain disrupted daily life, and the damaged roads and power systems were waiting to be repaired. In Malaysia, heavy rains led to floods in Selangor. City volunteers went there to evaluate the damage and delivered consolation cash door-to-door. -door. They've helped a total of 182 households, hoping to calm their anxious minds. Furniture are piled up and there's still mud on the floor. In Selangor, heavy rains have led to flooding in Kajan, and city volunteers have gone there to evaluate damage. When we first learned that the flood water has receded, we dispatched some people among recycling volunteers to care for our Dhamma family. The water level was up to my waist. When the water came, all the clothes fell into the water. Soil and human waste flushed in. It was very stinky. The water was brownish and all the clothes were wet. My cabinet, furniture, refrigerator and washing machine were damaged. After making a list of the affected residents, volunteers delivered a consolation cash to 182 affected residents door to door. Rasnida has joined Siji in Indonesia. Now that she has met the volunteers again, she feels more down to earth. I am very grateful that people care about us. Although we are foreigners, people still help us. We are just like a family. So next time I will contribute back. Uh, you know, when I have things, I will you know recycle it to the Suci Foundation, their center there. Uh, for them to recycle and uh, you know to produce uh, things that you know which will help other people's life you know so cannot just simply throw away all these things volunteers care for the affected residents sincerely hoping they can rebuild their homes soon in haiti due to the pandemic the villagers in the farming village is facing a shortage of food community leaders sought help from tsuchi and tsuchi volunteers went there to distribute rice to families in need The villagers in Duval farm for a living, growing fruits and vegetables. We have brought them care. Every bag of rice represents our love and care for the people. Due to the epidemic, they are living even harsher lives. We 
Because there is love in our hearts, we are able to provide care. If there is no love, we wouldn't be here today. This rice is from Taiwan. Taiwan has given us more than rice. They've delivered love. Wave your hands and thank Master Zheng Yan. Duval is a small community and there is no government officials to provide medical knowledge, so people do not have epidemic prevention concepts. Since the epidemic broke out, this is the first time people have come to help us. We are very grateful. Seeing you distribute rice, I know it is a difficult job. The next time you come, we will do preparation work ahead of time. The local church has collapsed in an earthquake in 2010. I hope you can help us rebuild it. We grow tomatoes and cabbage, but due to lack of rain, there's no harvest. The rice has been helpful to me. Our entire family does not need to go hungry. Sidalio, living in Mozambique, has been a Tsuchi long-term care recipient since 2015. He suffered from tuberculosis, causing his bones to grow abnormally. Around July this year, volunteers have heard about Sidalio's late condition and sent Dr. Long Carmen to check out his situation. Opening up the cover, what's visible are the leaves. Wounds are nowhere to be seen. For two weeks, he had been using folk prescription, laying leaves over his wounds. This is the only way for him to improve since he wasn't able to see a doctor. The leaves, hard as rock, were finally removed from the leg. Several weeks of false treatment has led to severe maturation. Team doctor Long Jiawen was demonstrating how to clean the wound. The wounds are now healed after two weeks. I found that not only is healing his wounds a concern, but most importantly, letting them know what's the proper medical care to prevent them from using folk prescriptions. I hope that in the future I can promote more of these ideas to them. Every time upon Zichi volunteers visit, Zilio will always welcome them by singing. Tsuchi Philippines Eye Center, with much evaluation and discussion, has reopened since July. The medical staff fear delaying the opening anymore would mean missing an opportunity for patient treatment. Besides conducting COVID-19 testings for the patients, the healthcare workers also take triple precaution, ensuring they themselves are protected as well as the patients. On the cusp of the COVID-19 storm, Philippine Tsuchi Eye Center has opened their surgical room. For those eye patients scheduled for surgery, they must undergo COVID-19 screening. The surgical team also has their own protection methods. Their surgeon and assistants are the ones most in contact with patients, so they put on two layers of PPE for protection. We're following the guidelines set by the WHO, CDC, and the Philippines Health Bureau itself. We have also adapted COVID safety guidelines set by different hospitals and held discussions about how to protect ourselves. If we carry out strictly, then we reduce the risk of infection. 
83-year-old Maria Sarhar has a tumor on her right eyelid. A short 30-minute surgery was all it took to help remove it. I tell myself if the patient was my own mother and she had a tumor but it was during the pandemic, would I not help her? Those who have glaucoma or cataracts are also scheduled for surgery as this giving of themselves during the pandemic is the choice of these selfless healthcare workers. Mr. Liu, the owner of a recycling yard in Kaohsiung, piled up debris in his home and factory as he waited for a good price to sell the materials. Unfortunately, angry neighbors complained and reported him due to the lack of sanitation. Such volunteers pitched in and spent a month cleaning his property. Volunteers are able to lift heavy objects with ease and in some instances, a forklift is needed. These are all large metal objects which Zijib volunteers came to clean up at the recycling yard. Siji brothers and sisters mobilized as mostly a crowd of men as 20 newcomers were invited to come here and help out. Mr. Liu is the owner of this recycling yard. Originally, he wanted to wait for a good price for these materials as his factory in the house soon became full. Items in the house were piled from floor to ceiling, with volunteers only able to clear them out by a human chain. The neighbors thought this area was messy, so they reported it to the Environmental Protection Agency. Recently, Mr. Liu was unwell and had surgery. He finally figured out that he needed to clean his house. This time, we can use the power of kindness to finish this work for Mr. Liu as soon as possible. This is a basic sanitation issue. In order to do recycling, volunteers set up tents and help sort items on site. Today, help from Tsuji has really impressed me. I am very grateful. After several weeks of cleaning, this very difficult task was finally completed, giving Mr. Liu a peace of mind. In Kaohsiung, Taiwan, an aging father had to put his son in a care home last year due to failing health. Now that his condition is better, he visits his son at the home and hopes that he can take his son home soon. So she is there to help this family of two work out something best suited for their situation. Arriving at the care home, Mr. Liu immediately gets emotional. Mr. Liu is so happy to see his son, he nearly cries. His son is 29 years old and has mental and speech developmental problems. Last year, Mr. Liu's health declined and he had to put his son in a care home, which was the first time the two have been separated. I can't just leave him here. I've taken care of him for over 20 years. He's been by my side since he was little. After the son was born, Mr. Liu's wife left the family and left the son in the full-time care of his father. I used to be a plumber, but that wasn't easy to have my son by my side while working, so I switched to metal resource recycling, and that was easier since he could sit in the car while I worked. This 65-year-old father shows his love for the son through every action he does. Though the son has trouble with words, it doesn't hinder his ability to be a helper. He's a helper. Sometimes he pushed the residents outside or help clean up after meals or the table. He's great. He's a good and happy-go-lucky child. If you ask him, he'll say he's happy. The father wants to take him home. His thinking is that the two have one another to depend on. It's a bittersweet burden for the father, but still Mr. Liu hopes to recover his health so he may take his son home with him. Bye. 
in Suzhou, China, so she has been caring for laborers and their children with their special project. After the epidemic stabilized, Siji started activities to promote parent-child care and feel piety. The parent of two, Wang Hairong, also participated to improve her relationship with her children. The promise made a year ago was fulfilled now. Little girl, Zhao Haidi, is an eager participant in Zhiji activities. After school activities, calligraphy, filial piety related events, you can see her everywhere. Ever since I came to Zhiji, I have learned contentment, graciousness, kindness, and benevolence. Zhao Haidi's virtue enrichment in Zhiji isn't a situational practice. She helped her mother who is a cleaner working 10 hours a day to do housework, loosening the burden on her mother's shoulders. I'm really tired since I clean glass all day. I couldn't feel my arms after a day's work. Heidi is very observant of me. She would tell her brother that I'm tired and will cook for me. I help my mother with household chores, although I cause my mother to get angry sometimes, and I'll be scared to say sorry, so I use my action to express my intention. Wang Hailong learned to self-reflect by participating in Ziqi's activities, also improving her relationship with her children. Ziqi sisters have told me how to self-reflect and control my temper. I have recalled some conversations and will be listening to it so I could better control myself in the future. The family lived happily and healthily with the help of Ziqi's activities. Also in China, Ziqi volunteers have initiated a special project for students from labor families since 2016. The spring session of the project was affected by the pandemic and the courses were held online. After the pandemic came under control, the summer session reopened. Welcome students back on campus. After a few months, Sichi volunteers welcome students coming back for the summer session. Auntie didn't see you guys for so long because of the pandemic we didn't meet each other. Caring for laborers' families, the first course for students attending the summer session is primarily around the concept of filial piety. A cup of tea expresses thousands of emotions mixed into an action of giving, creating a warm environment for parents and children. Please learn good, learn well, okay? Not long ago, Mr. Don was diagnosed with terminal stage cancer. He hugged his children tightly and burst into tears. I don't have great skills and I can't provide you much. You don't have to be rich or famous. I pray and hope that you may live your life safely and peacefully. Be a good person. Don't go down the wrong path. In Chiji, we will teach you certain ideas, but today we practice filial piety. We must pay our respects to the elderly. Be a good kid, okay? Receiving blessings from parents and Sichi volunteers, students attending the summer session will continue to grow and flourish. In today's aging society, the demand for caregivers is increasing. However, most caregivers are over 45 years old. Some are still working as caregivers at the age of 60. To address the future needed for caregivers, the long-term care center industry and universities are working together to encourage young people to invest in the industry. Our work is not just preparing food for them. You also need to know about their taste and what they like to eat. Taking care of the elderly is not as simple as one might imagine. Long-term care centers say that many young people leave the industry because of the hard work. Surveys say that by 2025, Taiwan will enter a super-age society with one in five people over the age of 65. 
The Ministry of Labor encouraged young people to work in long-term care and caregiving through a training program. Last year, there were 8,908 people enrolled. Some 1,430 of them were employed and 7,478 were unemployed. Among those who took part in training, 72 percent became employed. However, the number of applicants for training are still mostly middle-aged people. And over half of them are over 45 years old. In the past 10 years, we may have trained hundreds of thousands of caregivers, but in fact, for the actual frontline service or daycare center employees for long-term care is only about 30,000. This shows that half of which complete the training, work in hospital care, and receive 60 U.S. dollars a day. This long-term care center in Jai regularly cooperates with nursing colleges and other schools. Wang Tianqi, who graduated from the Department of Nursing at Zhonghua University of Medical Technology, got a caregiving license in his 20s. Nowadays, there are too many elderly people in our super-aged society. I think there are too few people in this caregiver industry. I want to become involved in this industry, so when there are elders in my own family who are old, I can also take care of them. Fu Anyo, who graduated from Chongren Junior College of Nursing, thinks that his kind of work will prepare him for taking care of the elderly in his own family. I want to do this at first because in my family, there are members already in their 60s, and they are considered elderly. I am an only child and the only grandson in the family. I have to take this responsibility to help my family, and at the same time, I want to grow in this area and help more people. In the past, most caregiver jobs were performed by women. With societal changes and subsequent demands, more and more men have become involved in the industry. Anyone who is 16 years of age or older and has an elementary school degree or above and is physically and mentally healthy and has no bad habits or infectious diseases can apply for training. The course includes 70 hours of core courses and 48 hours of practical courses. After completing the training, you can apply for caregiver certification. The classes that caregivers should take include understanding the laws related to long-term care, understanding the role of caregivers, dealing with people with disabilities and dementia, family care service skills, and understanding common diseases of the elderly, and finally, interpersonal communication skills. Today, they are not here just to do a job as they have to have a bit of love. This type of achievement is not concrete. We are also in need of discovering talents whom can continue in the future, as there are many old people in the future, and we really need to encourage people to go into this profession. Caregiving is an industry in which people take care of others. It's not for those that are only self-interested. The benefits include not only having stable income to support their own family, they can also help another family live out life in quality and dignity through their professional services. The Jiangjun Elementary School in Tainan launched the Draw Our Hometown project, encouraging the students to draw their own hometown. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you and goodbye.